We talked about an any keyword index where the keywords are interior to each of the items that's being indexed. Now let's talk about an Audi keyword index where the keywords are held outside of the items that are being indexed. So you'll see here a, a, little, a little snippet of schema. That snippet of schema is outside. We've been talking about indexing sections, right? So each of the, the section in all cases in, in, this, um, in these topics, the section is our item. The section is the thing that's being indexed. And in this case, the section is being indexed by keywords that are outside the section. They're not inside the section. And if you want to get a, a, a more, a, a larger view of the, of the schema, please download the sample schema and open it up in Oxygen and you'll see, um, you'll see what I'm talking about here, that these keywords are away from the, from the sections that they index. So they're away from the sections they index and they point back in. That's the key hallmark of an Audi structure. It's outside the thing that's being organized and it points back in. So what points back in here? Anytime you see something that says ref ID, you can bet you that it's a data type called what? XS colon ID ref. An ID ref, as you'll well remember by now, I hope, is a pointer to another element somewhere inside of the, uh, the instance. And so this is creating a link between the keyword and the, um, uh, between the keyword and the place in the section, or in, in this case, because it says section ref ID, between the keyword and the section where that keyword um, lives. Now the keyword is, excuse me, the section ref IDs, you can see they have a type ID ref, meaning they're pointers, and there's one or more of them. So what does that mean? That means that I can point to as many sections as I want. One keyword term can index as many sections as I want it to, which is a natural thing, right? I, I, I like that. I, like, I want to be able to say that if I have a keyword called index, it'll point to all sections, not just one section, right? It can point to a variety of sections. It doesn't just have to point to one section. So I can have as many sections referenced for a particular keyword as I want. That's a kind of a nice thing and, a, and, a, and a, an advantage to using this, um, this Audi system is that it's very easy to point the same, el the same keyword to multiple items. Not that you can't do that in, in any system, but it's a little bit more cumbersome. And this one is nice and simple, easy to understand and straightforward. Okay, looking at the instance behind the schema in screen two here, you can see that our keyword index is really that. It's a whole, it's a whole bunch of keywords. So we have all the titles of the keywords and then all the sections that they're linked to. Notice the, in this case, the section ref IDs are, um, are text children of the section ref ID element. I could have chosen to create an extra attribute inside that section ref ID called maybe ref ID or something like that. But in this case, I put the, um, I put the ID ref inside not an attribute, but inside an element. And that's a repeating element. It's, a, it's an unbounded list of sections so that I can reference as many sections as I want. And so another nice thing about this, this particular kind of index is I can see my whole index all at one time. I don't have to scan through and find all the keywords embedded in the text to see my index in the instance. OK, looking now at the transform. Again, we see a transform that's not particularly complex. Um, it has uh, a, a table, so it uses a table as the container for the index. Um, and now, instead of having a row for each, uh, sorry, in, in, now there's a for each, and it's for each keyword that's in the Audi keyword index. I include Audi keyword index here instead of just whack whack keyword, because as you remember, in, this same, in the same instance, we have keywords that are embedded inside of paragraphs, and I don't want to capture those. I only want to capture the keywords that are in the Audi keyword index. And so that inner for each loop, again, is going to create a, um, a row for each keyword. And that row now has, um, is sorted by title. And so this will be sorted alphabetically. You can see the XSL sort command there. OK, and so we have one row per keyword. And now that row is a little bit more sophisticated than rows we've seen before. It has the title of the keyword in column one, but in column two, you see another for each loop. For each what? Well, we have a recurring list of these section refs, right? We can have anywhere between one and a thousand section refs. And so we're going to have to put in a little link for each section ref. And so you can see there, it says for each section ref. And by the way, that section ref must be a child of the keyword, otherwise this isn't going to work because while we're inside the outer for each loop, our current, um, our current node continues to be a keyword node. 
and then the the x path that's in the in the inner for each loop is uh, uh, is relative to that outer for each loop. So it's uh, so it must be a child because we don't see any intervening slashes there. Okay, so think about that if that's not immediately apparent to you. And then that for each loop is just going to create a link. It's a link to what? It's a link to the section. And you can see that it uses the value of, it finds the section. Oh, okay, one other thing to, to explain here, especially if you haven't seen this in other, um, in other lectures. I'm using a variable here. Um, don't consider, if you're in the less technical track, don't concern yourself too much with these variables. Just understand that in this case, the variable is a convenient place to put that section ref ID. So the section ref ID is in the variable, so anytime you see dollar sign section ref ID, you can, you can consider that to be the value of the section ref ID. Okay, and so we do this section ref ID for each, excuse me, we do a link for each section ref ID, so if a keyword is linked to five sections, we're going to put out five links. The link links to the section header, it links to the place where the section is, because I'm referencing the section ID, not the keyword ID. Um, and it links also, I mean, excuse me, and it uses the title of the section. Okay, that's the transform. Um, if you're in the non-technical track, there's not so much about that transform that you have to have taken home. If you're in the technical track, you should pretty much have understood most everything about that transform. Okay, so if we look at screen or, or image four here, we see what the uh, output looks like. And you can see that we have a row for every keyword. And then in column two, we repeat the link over and over again in that for each loop. We repeat the link and we make a link to all the sections that have a particular index entry in them. So the, book in the word book is only indexed in one section, whereas the word index is indexed in four sections. And each of those links is a link to the, uh, is a link to the um, section. And again, because of, the, because of the way that I structured these transforms, putting all the index examples in one instance, these links are links to other places on the page, rather than as they usually would be, which is uh, links to separate pages. Okay, I think that's what I need to tell you about Audi keyword indexes. And that ought to get you uh, on track with understanding them conceptually as well as the mechanics of making one happen in XML.